6947. All right, let's bring in our next guest analyst. He's batting cleanup today. He's the final guest of the day, Oliver Slope, Blue Line Futures in Chicago. Oliver, thanks for coming on. Uh, all right, brother, the floor is yours. What's top of mind? Well, a little bit of a pullback today, which ultimately I think is probably healthy for the market. As you'd mentioned, soybeans cutting to, trying to climb back into positive territory. And even corn is coming up off of those early morning lows, which is encouraging to see. We see kind of a pivot pocket between 409 to 413 uh, in the intermediate term. And I think there's probably 10 cents of risk to, on a breakout to the upside and probably 10 cents to the downside. So ultimately, I wouldn't be surprised to see this market settle into a little bit of a range. I think some of the weakness that we're seeing uh, in today's trade may have come on the back of yesterday afternoon's Stonex survey, which showed the uh, corn yield at 182.9. That was up from 182.3 from last month. So as they say, these big crops, they keep getting bigger. I think the big question mark, though, is how much of that is already priced in? Is it priced to perfection? And is there room for disappointment? That's going to be the million-dollar question when the combines really start picking up pace here in the next couple uh, weeks and months. What do you think? I think a lot of bearish news is probably already baked into the market. And I think that the market's starting to reflect that demand for the corn uh, has been strong for a while. So that is a silver lining on that front. Soybeans, on the other hand, we all know that the demand had been really lackluster through the spring and most of the summer, but really over the last four or five weeks, new crop sales for soybeans have exceeded the top end of expectations. So there is uh, some light at the un end of the tunnel, perhaps. We got another couple of flash sales this morning, one for 126,000 metric tons to China and the other for about 190,000 to unknown destination. So certainly, uh, some positive uh, outlines there. Hopefully, we can keep the momentum going, though. All right. Great, uh, great timing. They're telling me to wrap in my ear. Stay right there, though. We're going to go away. We're going to pay some bills. We're going to come back and talk more with Oliver Slow, Blue Line Futures in Chicago right after this. Back in our guest analyst, Mr. Oliver Slope, Blue Line Futures. Oliver, thanks for sticking around. Uh, anything jump off the pages at you when we talk about those livestock prices? Oh, no. You know, it, cattle markets have been just really struggling, especially through the month of August with a bunch of lingering headline risk. And it seems now that we've turned the calendar over into September, we started off on a little bit higher ground, but we got another bombshell headline yesterday uh, with regards to anthrax in Wyoming. And that has certainly sparked uh, a little bit of concern out there, which is, why I think, why we're seeing some pressure in today's trade. And you know, seasonally, uh, a lot of times you see the feeder cattle continue to drift lower into the end of the year. So I think rallies are still... Uh, looked at as selling opportunities, especially for those who need to protect the downside risk. And there's still a lot of uncertainty out there uh, regarding the outside markets. Tomorrow, as I'm sure you've hit on a thousand times throughout the day, a lot of economic data and all eyes are on how that could potentially impact the consumer and demand going forward. So uh, we expect there to be volatility and for that to continue to remain elevated. But again, to kind of reiterate the fact that any rallies we get in these markets should be looked at op as opportunities to at least establish some sort of protection. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't argue with that. And you know, this month has started off on a pretty volatile one, uh, especially in the equities. But uh, we had a couple of decent days in the green here when we talk about the the ag markets and and, and uh, cattle uh, livestock. But, um, you know, it's just interesting to see that, uh, you know, Mother Nature really doesn't give us a chance to hedge anything decent all year long. I mean, you, you had to really kind of back the truck up and, and empty the boat when it came to the spring prices, because anything after that really was just on a downhill slide. And we finally, it's just, it's just the way things work out that we finally do get our summer rally, but off of 385 and D scorn. You know, that's, it's just, it just wasn't that type of year. 10 seconds to you. Well, you hit the nail on the head, uh, but you can't uh, make a, a lack of indecisions uh, throughout earlier this year, kind of leave you paralyzed in making decisions in the future. So still got to remain proactive in these markets. I agree. And efficient. Thank you very much. Give uh, Oliver a call. He knows what he's doing. Oliver Slope, Blue Line Futures in Chicago.